Tonight's live coverage of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Cadillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. personal intentions. Let us offer this Mass also for those who have no one to pray for them. And in a special way, we include the intentions of all those commemorating their birthdays or anniversaries today. And also for the needs of all those who tirelessly support the apostolate of CCTN through prayer intentions, love offerings, sponsorships, and reassuring goodwill. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, dear sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, giving Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve the gods your father served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among all the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. Crushed 
in spirit he saves taste and see the goodness of the Lord many are the troubles of the just man but out of them all Just over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Vice slays the weak. Just pay for their guilt, but the Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one in curse guilt who takes refuge in him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Defer to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be submissive to their husbands as if to the Lord, because the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of his body, the church, as well as its savior. As the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her to make her holy, purifying her in the bath of water by the power of the word to present to himself a glorious church, holy and immaculate, without stain or wrinkle or anything of that sort. Husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Observe that no one ever hates his own flesh, no. He nourishes it and takes care of it as Christ cares for the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cling to his wife and the two shall be made into one. This is a great foreshadowing. I mean that it refers to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless, unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. A blessed Sunday to us. If we follow the trend of the readings that we are uh, having, especially the gospel reading, uh, since we are in the so-called year B, we are supposed to be reflecting, reading and reflecting the gospel of St. Mark. But there was a kind of a break when the episode of the Gospel of Mark brings us to the feeding of the multitude. Because after that, the account of John chapter 6 is inserted. Now for the reason that the Gospel of St. Mark is short, very short of all the four Gospels. And there are 30 plus Sundays within the ordinary time of the year. And if we continue reading with that, but anyway, the beautiful description and the beautiful experience and the beautiful programmatic presentation from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, is all about the bread of life. It is in connection with Jesus' feeding of the multitude. And it stretches to a number of Sundays, and finally we have come to the end of chapter six actually this is the last section or this is the last sunday where we will be reading the gospel of saint john and next sunday we will be back with the gospel of saint mark but what is so significant here is a very beautiful uh, reflection or mirroring of our experiences when when discourses are being lengthened no siguro nakalhinapi naman mo ana og mo attend mo og naay mga functions nga naay diskurso nga gani taas na gani kayo ang diskurso di ba ma di na ta ma dili na ta at ease no so mo na nga si Pope Francis ning ning ingon nga if possible ang homily og domingo taas na na kayo ang 15 minutos no 10 minutos okay na no or 8 to 10 minutes kay ang attention span sa mga tao of course is also to be considered no unless you are giving a seminar or you are attending a bible study kay you can have it for hours and hours no but then the point here is to practically plant or to practically put og sabi ni saya pa itisok og unsa ang mahinungdanon nga punto aron sa makabati o sa mamati adunay ma mahuptan no? that something will be grasped and from that they will continue to work on it to weigh things and make a decision and make a choice especially when faced with uh, so many options in life Nganuman, today's gospel reading at the end of that lengthy 
uh, episode in the Gospel of John, St. John chapter 6, is all about the reactions of not just those who were listening or the so-called uh, oppositions of Jesus. They were so disturbed, they did not believe in him. They murmured, they quarreled. And so we, this now comes to the point of confronting his disciples who were actually following him from the beginning. Munang ang pangutana, does this shock you? Huh? Because they were murmuring. And so because of that, they started to not to follow Jesus anymore. So they they first first they were called disciples. Nanong gitawag man sila disciple. Disciple means sumusunod, istudyante. But they reached a point actually according to the commentary in the Gospel of John, a premature decision. Wala gud maayo og timbang-timbang. Ang ilang tawhanon nga uh, pagsabot maoy ilang gipahimugatan. No? Wala nila hatagi og kahigayunan o lugar nga ang ginoo diha sa iyang espiritu diha sa iyang paglamdag muhatag kanila og lugar o kahigayunan and so they they started to leave so unsa may tawag nila gikan sa pagkadisipulo what do you call a person st who stopped following who stopped to become a disciple ang tawag ana is apostate apostate no dili prostate apostate no? so apostasy what is apostasy apostasy is not following anymore so mihunong na pagsunod wala na mo mutubag sa sa tawag now nindot kay ning tan-awon because the the effect of the effect of discipleship ang pagka-estudyante, ang, ang punto diha, aduna na ito yung tumong. Discipleship has a purpose. And what is the purpose of being disciples? So that one will be, a, will be sent. Okay? After studying, after being a pupil, after being a disciple, one is being sent. And what is the term that is used of one who is being sent from being a disciple to an apostle? Muna nga, apost, apostasy, nindot kayo, somehow almost a play of words of the word apostle. An apostate is the one who stopped being a disciple, and an apostle is one who continues to study and learn, and now takes on the kajals, takes, takes on the, the role of promoting and proclaiming. So, when, you, when we stop following the Lord, we become apostates. And that is not what we are called to be. We are called to be apostles. Gitawag kita, aron mahimo kitang mga apostoles to continue the work of the Lord, to continue sharing His works in our lives. But there are always decisions that we have to make. There are so many options around us. No? Nindot kayo ang opening prayer nato. We ask the Lord that we will be guided to choose what He commands. Sorry, ha. Nagkaulitaw ng tani. To choose what He commands. Because even in the uncertainties of this world, we do not stop deciding for ourselves. No? Bisan gani siguro gani ng buntag. Na apay pipila kaninyo karon ng mga musimbak ha po o dili. Okay? Sayo ramang kayo ng alas 6 nga misa. Uy, nasiguro yung alas 10. Nasiguro alas 11. Ah, di lang kong alas 11. Ah, na, di tao alas 2. Pag abot ng alas 2, ay, sa alas 5 na lang ko. No? Yung ana nga itong kinabuhi. We have to make every step of the way certain decisions. And this is the earmark of a Christian, of a true Christian. We have to make a decision all the time. But then, there are not many options to choose, however. There are only two options. Sama sa giingon ni Moises and ni Joshua sa first reading. No? Just like in the, Deuteronom the book of Deuteronomy, Moses confronted the people to choose between the good and the bad. And here it is, are we going to continue to follow the Lord or not? So muna, ang nindot kayo nga, hagit. 
this is the most challenging uh, aspect in every day of our lives as Christians. And here we are given the answer of St. Peter, who actually directly addressed the need. Where shall we go, O Lord? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come and we, are con we have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. You are the Christ. And this is the pathway that we have to choose. As Christians, we are constantly reminded that it is always a question of making a decision when we are put into the crossroads. But don't worry. The crossroads are also reminders that we are Christians. Og naga ni crossroad, naga ni mga panahon na kita mo decide, na ata actually mo, mo pili no? in the crucible. O sa may crucible, mga, mga pagsulay, mga kakulian o kakuyaw sa kinabuhi. But we have to make a decision. But we are following a Christ who chose to offer His life on the cross so that He will give us a bridge, He will give us a passage to the place where we desire. That's also in the, in the opening prayer today. Aron maadto kami sa Osaka Lugar, the place that we, our hearts desire, and that is heaven. And the only way to heaven is through the cross. As we, as we constantly are reminded that when we study our faith, we are talking about, or we are learning, and we are embracing a, not a Christless cross, nor a crossless Christ. Naadyod na kanunay ang cross kung anaa si Kristo. That's why decision making is also a crossroad. It is something that we carry. It is something that we embrace. But at the same time, it has to move us into deciding to follow the Lord. Because if not, we're not following Him anymore. So as we continue this Eucharistic celebration and the daily grind of our lives where we make decisions for the good, for the better, if not for the best, against what is evil and what is not good, may it constantly be part of our reflection. Dili lang diha diha dayon nga mo decision ta. Nang kinahang lang ato yun usa nga timbang timbangon. Nga hinumdumin ninyo kung magtimbang timbang ta. No, naagi na'y duha ka side ang timbang timbang di ba? Ya di mo na mo tindog ng duha ka side kung walay tukod. No, nakita mo anang symbol sa justice sa sa kanang sa balaod kanang lady justice di ba? Kanang timbangan cross man pud nay purma ana. But we have and we hopefully and we make sure that what we have chosen will be for the Lord, with the Lord. And by the way, when we choose for the Lord, it is with Him that we make that choice as Christians. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made consubstantial of the Father. Through Him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For all the day He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, let us now place our trust in the Father who is ever faithful to his people in need. May he look upon us with kindness as we now say, 
Lord, show us your kindness. Lord, show us your kindness. May your church, may our church leaders remain in their call to humility and service. May they live in Christ's truth and help unbelievers to seek God's will. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May our political and civil leaders always opt for what is right and just and not succumb to the temptations of power, influence, and or financial gain. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May all people find secure hope in the words of Jesus, the words of eternal life, as we go through this pressing time of crisis. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May the Lord grant help to the needs of our sick brethren, especially those who suffer in any way. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May our beloved dead see the hope of eternal life in the promise of Jesus' resurrection. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. Father, your kindness and love surpass all our expectations. Hear our prayers and make us sharers in the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. and brothers that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, 
that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as an exaltation we are playing. <laughs> Therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop with Middlefield and Ruben, his assistant bishops, all bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit. Let's now share with each other the sign of peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O oh my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in His sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of His glory and teach you the words of truth. May He instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Eucharist has been offered. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let all that is within me bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord.
This live coverage of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padimio and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. Thank you.